bonds are going out with her. But I, I know you don't have a girlfriend. So you couldn't have a girlfriend. I mean, I, there's no way with any woman put up with all the attention you give me and still be your girlfriend. So I didn't worry about it. I didn't even ask him if he had a girlfriend because I, I just knew that anybody who loved me like he did just couldn't have a girlfriend. Now I knew he flirted with women and I, I, that didn't bother me because I, I believed in freedom. I didn't want the guy to feel caged in and I wanted him to enjoy other women, but I, I knew he wasn't going to bed with him, with them or doing anything like that because he loved me. I could tell he loved me. He was giving me far too much attention. Why, no woman would put up with all the attention he gave me, so I wasn't worried about a girlfriend at all. And I didn't believe in being possessive with him because I, one of the problems I had with my husband was jealousy. I mean, he was, he was trying to control me, and he wouldn't give me freedom, so I was determined I wouldn't do that to Brent. So I said, it's okay. I said, I don't, I don't care if you hang out with other women and have fun with them. That's perfectly fine. I said, I, I'm not the jealous type. I want you to enjoy yourself. I wasn't worried about a girlfriend. In fact, I encouraged him to have female friends. And I heard about him kissing his co-worker, Marina Sordas, on the website. I thought, ah, that's cool. I liked Marina. I thought she was nice. Didn't bother, didn't bother me a bit. And I knew that he, he had women friends, and that he, he was very... He was a very physical, kind of huggy type of a guy. So I figured, I figured any guy who's as warm and generous as this guy, that's just the way he is. And it, I, I knew that he knew how to, how would I say this? He knew how to have the right balance in his relationship with women. He knew how to express the affection, but he knew how to cut it off before it went too far. I had, I had faith in him because he was, the, he was so sensitive in his handling of me that I just knew that he understood women. He, you know, he knew how to handle us. I used to read about comments how women would chase him at these a Star Trek conventions and how he cracked jokes and get away from him. And I'd laugh. I think it was hilarious. And say, yeah, that sounds like him. <laughs> if he got in an uncomfortable situation, he'd crack, his, he'd crack a bunch of jokes and joke his way out of it. I mean, you can't afford to be the jealous type if you're in love with a Hollywood star. And I wasn't. I never got mad at him because I thought he, you know, because I thought that, well, he was getting, I think, about 50 marriage proposals a month. And I, I wasn't worried about him at all. I sensed that he had a very mature and intelligent grasp of the female sex, that he knew how to handle us. So I was a little puzzled about this blonde. I, the conclusion that I came to was she probably worked for Paramount Studios and she was a business associate. And so I just wrote it off. I figured if, if she was something that I needed to know about, that Brent would tell me about her. I mean, because, and that he wouldn't encourage me to write him love I was writing him love letters. I'm making love to him in my letters because I was so frustrated. I, mean, I did more than make love to him in letters, but I wanted to marry him. And I felt guilty that I couldn't give him my body because he made it plain he wanted that. So, but he dropped off on that after a while. And we just kind of settled off into sort of a nice semi-romantic, semi-platonic friendship where there were no barriers between us. We talked about anything and everything. It was, it was a very lighthearted, freewheeling, uh, very witty, and I should say, very warm and deep friendship between us. The exchanges, most of the time, were very positive. Uh, there was, I don't really know that, I don't really think we ever had what I would call an out-and-out -out fight. I mean, it was, it was a very positive relationship. Uh, anyways, 93, we did have... Whenever there was a problem, I usually just cried a lot, and <laughs> and I'd tell him what he was doing that was bothering me. He couldn't commu The most frustrating thing about this relationship, if you want to call it that, is he never talked to me, and the communication was lacking. But usually I figured things out after a while. I figured something was blocking him. I didn't know what it was, but I, I figured it was legitimate. And so I just respected that, and I was very patient with the fact that he wouldn't talk to me. You might say, you sound like a real cry baby. Actually, 
I would say 99% of our communication was very positive. There, we hardly ever were mad at each other. Uh, maybe 1% of the time I would be crying because usually it would be because of the silence, and I usually had a legitimate reason. Uh, well, anyways, let's get back into 93. So 92 goes by, 93 is pretty uneventful. I mean, I'm writing him every day, sharing my life with him, and I, I was still working on my writing. I was still a student at the Institute of Children's Literature, and my goal was to become a professional writer. I was dreaming every day about becoming his wife and helping in his work as a writer, maybe a screenwriter. I did look a little into some screenwriting. But after my script got rejected, I decided I wanted to be a novel writer, a prose writer. I decided I didn't want to work for Hollywood. I sensed that as a Hollywood writer that I would not have creative freedom, that I would be bound too much by the rules of the studios, and that I would be hindered as an artist. So I wanted to work in a medium where I would have the ultimate in artistic expression, where I wouldn't feel like I had to follow rules, that I could make my own rules. So I felt the best route for me was to become a novel writer, so I could create the story that I wanted and not be bound by the guidelines of the studios. I didn't want anyone telling me what was good art. Because my goal as a writer was to write stories that I liked. And I didn't want to have to follow some silly guidelines that I thought would stilt my artistic expression or that would make my writing inferior to what it could be. So I thought the best route for me was to be a book writer. I didn't trust Hollywood. When they rejected my script, I sensed that there was something wicked going on there. And I decided that I would be a frustrated writer if I worked for Hollywood. So I decided to develop my prose writing skills, and my goal was to become a novel writer, a writer of books, and I wanted to write love stories, because I thought that way I could make it up to him. I said I'd write a great love story, and pattern characters after our relationship, and that's what I did. So when I graduated, well, let's, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Another interesting incident happened to me in 93. And I forgot to mention this also, in 92, my son had to go to the hospital. Uh, this and, and then it happened again in 93. Something hit him. He had asthma really bad. He was outside playing, my son was, and I had to take him to the hospital. And usually, if I was going through a crisis, Brent was unusually supportive. But this time, I would say about a week.